Hey again, so, uh, surprise, I lied. The next man's guide was actually a backburner video sneaking up behind you this whole time. I do want to be upfront and say sorry for the bait and switch. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but for now, let's talk about some topics that didn't quite make the cut for the main video. First off, secondary weapons. Aside from the South Park gag, we really only talked about two secondaries in the episode proper, and those were the mobility focused ones. It might have been interesting to talk about the other ones, but with the backburner, most non mobility secondaries function basically the same as they do with every other flamethrower. To be fair, the flare gun is a fun opportunity if you're doubling down on the crits gimmick, and the man melter lets you extinguish teammates without tapping into your more limited supply of air blasts, so that's nice. But other than that, you're usually just best off using the mobility stuff. We mostly just cut these for time because the video is long enough as it is. Next is ammo problems, which we talked about a little bit in the main video, but there were a couple of very common variables that we just didn't get around to. Notably, ammo breakpoints, ammo drops, and game modes. All of these were relatively important, but again, we're just cut for time. Okay, so breakpoints. Technically, with the back burner, you get four air blasts, but as soon as you press mouse one and use your flamethrower at all, you're down to three. With stock, crossing a breakpoint isn't really a huge deal since you go from having ten air blasts to having nine, which is more than enough for most fights. But going from four to three three is a pretty big deal, so it's usually best to assume that you only have a couple to work with on any individual fight. I say any individual fight, though, because in TF2, people drop ammo when they're killed. This is only ever really noticeable for classes and weapons that have perpetual ammo problems, like the backburner or the beggars or engineer and whatever. But for those people, these medium ammo packs are a lifesaver after winning a fight. So with the backburner, you can usually assume that in a 1v1, you'll get two air blasts back in the tank if you win. So it ends up kind of acting like a buffer that lets you be a little bit less stingy with your air blasts. Also, if you're ambushing a bunch of people, then those ammo packs should be dropping a lot more frequently. So in those situations, you can kind of go to town nearly as effectively as stock. That, or you die instantly, but hey, either way, no more ammo problems. It's also worth noting that the game mode matters a lot, too. The back is kind of like the short circuit in that the downside is a lot less pronounced on payload offense, but way more pronounced on maps and in modes where you don't get quite as many ammo packs sitting around the map as you usually do. Like I said, most of this was just cut for time, but we also wanted to lean more heavily into the unexpected theme, so we made the decision to focus on the more meta aspect of backburner air blast, that being that nobody expects you to actually do it. Okay, this next section is gonna get really complicated really fast, so hopefully you'll see pretty quickly why we ended up cutting it from the video proper. Let's talk crit detection on the backburner because oh my god, it's so fucking weird. Technically speaking, the backburner determines whether or not you crit by using the dot product between the vector describing the direction the target is facing and the vector describing the direction of the flames. If this dot product produces a number greater than 0.8, then the player is registered as being behind and deals crits, and if the number is less than 0.8, then normal damage is dealt. A dot product, algebraically, is the sum of the products of the corresponding entries of the two sequences of numbers, and geometrically Metrically, it's the product of the Euclidean magnitudes of the two vectors and the cosine of the angle between them. Right, so if you're a dumbass like me and zoned out immediately, here's what that means in really simple terms. A dot product is a number between negative one and one, and it's a way to tell if you're hitting the enemy gamer from behind. The closer the two vectors are to being opposites, the closer the number gets to negative one, and the closer they are to being the same, the closer the number gets to positive one. And if they're perpendicular, so like in the middle, it's gonna be zero. In order to crit, the dot product needs to be above 0.8, which when you consider that you can come at a person from either side, roughly translates to about 74 degrees, but this is often a little messy since an enemy gamer will be moving their mouse around and moving themselves, and so will you, and so will the fire particles. So the popular assumption is that the crit area is more like 90 degrees, which for the most part is a pretty reasonable assumption. But of course it's more complicated than that because flamethrowers are projectile weapons. And unlike something hit scan, such as backstabs or the backscatter, the back burner doesn't use the vector of you as a player to calculate the dot product, it uses the vector describing the direction of the flames i.e. the fire particles. And as I'm sure you can probably guess, fire particles are a little... Please consider the following. You are standing in front of an enemy gamer, looking down, the enemy gamer is looking forward, and you're both walking forward. You shoot the back burner and gradually move your camera to face in front of you. So now your fire particles, which of course bounced off the floor, are technically going in the same direction as your target, who is now walking in front of them, which means the dot product is one, which means even though you're standing in front of the enemy gamer, the game thinks you're behind them, which means the fire damage registers as a crit. It's so dumb. This problem can also happen if you bounce the particles off a wall or the floor or a slope or <laughs> to put it very simply, crit detection on the back burner is really weird and really complicated, and a deep dive into that would have broken the flow of the episode super badly, so we just decided to save it for this video. Also worth noting before we move on that I got all of this information from the TF2 wiki, so I probably still don't fully understand how it all works. If you really do want to know more, 
please go ask someone smarter than me because I don't fucking know at this point. On that note, let's talk about something that I'm actually qualified to talk about. Stupid strategies that shouldn't work. Specifically, whatever wacky bullshit we devolve into for the end of the video. So we knew we wanted the video to depart pretty heavily from the backburner's primary play style. That is to say, not being seen until it's too late, and ambushing, and blah blah blah. So the option we went with was arguably the most noticeable and audible weapon in the entire game, the frying pan. But we did consider a couple more options for this section when we were writing the script. The first was something we dubbed the front burner, in which you just get a crit super. After all, why bother jumping through all these trigonometry hoops to get crits when there's a far easier way to do it. And the other option was a second backburner pyro, which actually worked surprisingly well. Cause like, okay, you turn towards the first one who's running a distraction play and you accidentally show your back to the second one. So no matter which one you look at, you end up getting crit. It was fun. Get their ass. I told you, a hundred percent up panel on crit. Yeah. <laughs> People think, oh, it's a back burner. I just want to turn around, but then there's another one behind you. <laughs> Fools. But ultimately, we decided it would be funnier if we just had the video change into a man's guide to a completely different weapon. And the frying pan seemed like the natural choice for that. And for the ending stinger, I... I mean, look, I'm willing to admit the podcast gag was low-hanging fruit, but I think it fit perfectly. Like, oh, we have to do the most unexpected thing possible. Smash cut to us doing the most predictable thing possible. Also, the series is called A Man's Guide, which, yeah, it's based on the name Manco, but if you didn't play TF2, you gotta admit, it sounds kind of like some goofy-ass Manosphere podcast. So we tried to hit all the right notes with it. Obviously, insecure host who talks over the guest, guest who is only brought on to agree with everything the host says, phrases like high-value, devil's advocate, radical woke, etc. Mic audio that's been run through a bad auto mixer and compressed so hard that it's kind of painful to listen to, and of course, a logo featuring a lion, Homelander, and Patrick Bateman for absolutely no reason. And hey, if you're willing to put up with the painful audio again, there are a few extra Easter eggs hidden in the scene. Okay, thumbnail time. Once again, it's a really quick section. We kept on with the famous painting theme, and this one was based on The Lamentation of Christ, a 1555 painting by Tintoretto. I also want to mention that Toten, who you may also know as Chris from The Christo Lee Show, does most of the SFM work for my thumbnails, and all always does a fantastic job. But lately, my partner Kat has also been doing some graphic and paint over work for them, which is where that cool stylized flair that a lot of you seem to enjoy is coming from. Kat also did some work on this thumbnail, but instead of their typical style, she and Chris went for more of a painterly look, and it turned out fantastic. Like the thumbnail, I once again contracted out most of the SFM animations, so here are the specific credits for that. While this is on screen, I do want to say thank you so much for fighting with this program for me, because I could never do this myself in a million years. On a somewhat related note, some people actually figured out something was up when I posted the quote-unquote Huntsman teaser, since the intro is an homage to the clever girl scene from Jurassic Park, in which Robert Muldoon is outsmarted and killed by the Velociraptors. Quite a few people recognized the scene, but some of those actually mentioned that something felt off because of how the original scene played out. Oh, one more thing, sir. And to that, I can only say, nice job. You got me. And while we're on the subject, special thanks to John Patrick Lowry for providing his voice acting work for that intro scene. Clever girl. For the music in that scene, I obviously couldn't use the original recording of Clever Girl from John Williams' score, so I recreated it and transposed it up to the key of E. This is the key that most of tf 2 soundtrack is in, and that let me sprinkle in TF2 motifs throughout the track really easily, while also keeping in as much of the homage as possible. And as always, I'd also like to toot my own horn about some of the sound work, so here's a few of my favorite sound design moments. You all lose us. This spy. Clever girl. 
Once again, thank you all so much for watching. Now I'm going to offload all of the random clips that I either didn't use or had funny Discord stuff that got cut in the video proper, or uh, yeah, it's clipped on time. Okay, bye. Borneo is honestly one of my favorite maps for like funny spots you shouldn't be. Like even at first, you can stand on that like thing up there. Okay. It's great, I love this, but people usually look up here, so we'll see. Nope, oh, he didn't look up. <laughs> well, I got one, that counts. A tree! <laughs> Let's wait here a little bit. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna wait a sec to make sure nobody else comes in. Fool. All right, back to business. Oh, hello, other soldier. I'm probably dead here. It's time for the ultimate funny spot that I shouldn't be. <laughs> this is bullshit. Come on, don't look up. Okay, this is it. This is the perfect clip. How was that not a cr I swear to God. <laughs> I'm using it anyway. It's not as flashy, but the spot's also kind of funny. Okay, let me see if I can peek around the corner here. Perfect. <laughs> Where are you going? Here? <laughs> Hello? I've been holding this for 20 minutes. Do you understand what's at stake? <laughs> Do you understand what's at stake? That's cool. Are you way back in the corner there? Riveting pyro gameplay. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Oh, I'm out. Wait, what? This is not a good map for Huntsman. Eh. I have two scouts on me. <laughs> you fools, I have a flamethrower. We must stop the bomb. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> that poor original soldier that I've sent mommy, to the stratosphere like every time. Mommy, <laughs> I need my mommy medic. Yeah? That's unfortunate. Oh, bro yeah, doesn't know how to right click. That guy does. I need my, my, I need my medic. Oh, hi. What? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> well, you just trick stabbed that guy. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. yeah I didn't he, even he, see like, him until around. I bumped him. What the fuck it, yeah, happened? He, he did the thing where he like turned around because he like saw you on his screen. The, the trick stab thing that spies are doing. Oh damn, that's crazy. Wait, are you saying that he circle strafed him? Yeah, but it was kind of on accident. Well, no, I just stood oh, cool. still. I, also, how am I alive? All right, now they all died in the stickies. Gene, do me a favor. Can you go pull the scotches and see if you can actually see the outlines? Okay, we'll do. <laughs> Forklift, move your ass. Forklift certified has left the game. <laughs> that counts. It was a crit. I don't care. That counts. Oh. Cool. <laughs> Wait, I think I might have killed a spy on accident there. <laughs> I don't have any cosmetics on. You think this will work? I think it'll work again. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I'm across the map. Wait, this is perfect. Hang on. <laughs> this is an opportunity for weird shit to work, I think.
Yo, Goku lover 1939 just tried to fucking panic attack me and then missed all the shots. He doesn't even have Goku as his icon. What the f? He's not really a Goku lover. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. You're a fake fan. I still think the funniest thing I ever found out was that apparently it is in the Rock's contract that he cannot lose an on screen fight. Oh, I just got the corner stab on Goku Lover 1939. Let's fucking go. Uh, let's see where that arrow hit. That arrow literally hit him in the in the head. Dude, what is that scout's problem? Is that a matador? Does that count? Family guy. <laughs> How is that engineer so alive? Oh, he yeah. has. <laughs> that soldier was not expecting to survive. Oh, got him. Goku lover left. No. <laughs> who, will, who will love Goku now? <laughs> Let's see if there's anybody up here. Oh, that is unfortunate, Spy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel so bad for that Spy. I just killed him like three times in a row. Did he dead ring? Yeah, and I killed him both times. I'm on a six kill streak, and all six of them are his dead ringer and his death. That's an interesting uh, kunai description. Oh, yeah? He j he's just gibberish. His kunai is named Kopti the Mauled, but then his description is just pure gibberish. I'm gonna name my back burner No You. Huh? Oh, f my mouse. Uh, hang on. Uh, okay, my game froze. Cool. <laughs> yeah, just stopped responding. Hmm. All right. <laughs> well, at least it was a funny clip. Yeah. Hey, you know what the least expected thing about the back burner is? Your mouse DCing and your game hard crashing instantly. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't expect that one. Oh, my mouse feels different in this port. Are you sure your DPI didn't get reset or anything? It might have gotten reset, but I just got a reflex kill, so. Bye. Got him. I could have made it, but I chose not to. I appreciate Soldier. that. Oh, I got Uber. Cool. Huge. Also, that Trollger just got a Mantred kill in the middle of all of that. Reflex jump Damn, on. Damn, that right. was a clip and a half. You know, if you right. beetle, so. Oh, huge. Does that count? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Ouch. that counts. I was killed by a melted ice cream cone. I'm lactose intolerant. Is that what you just said? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so you know, you mean, I want the direct hit. That spy just floated spy. out of the water with his sap around. That looked awesome. I'm going after this demo. Where are you? I heard you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> cool. No, okay, we ball. That's bad. Yes. You're outside of my range, there you are. Yeah, it's fine. We're fine. <laughs> Pyro gaming. Let's get out of here. Hi. <laughs> nice kunai. Oh, sh. Ah! Okay, I'm up here now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm Ubered? What the f? I thought there were more. Eh, well, we can walk at spawn and make there be more. There we go. <laughs> See? Effective Uber. <laughs> that poor pyro. Oh, buddy. That was like Wiley e. Coyote time where he walks off a cliff and looks down for one second. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, you want, you want your rocket, you want your oh, hey, there we go. One. 
Huge plays. Hey. All right. Well, that counts. Yeah. <laughs> Just looking at the wall. Interesting. Wall. All right. Use. Oh, you beat me to it. How are you alive? <laughs> he was using stock, yeah. So it's not like he had like brass beast tanking or whatever. That was wild. <laughs> We're good. Oh. <laughs> Dead rain and then just come back. <laughs> What the fuck was that? Did he just dead ring, come back, and kill Blind? I don't know. He just stood there and looked at me menacingly. I don't know what I'm supposed to make of that. He wasn't expecting it. Get him. Huh? He got random crits! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Ender Ninja 721 just fucking annihilated my ass. I, was, I, I walked by and tapped that heavy, and I was like, all right, he won't. Cool. Oh, I was like, you won't expect the pirate to come out of nowhere. <laughs> Gabe gave him a get out of jail free card on that one, and honestly, that's for the best. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> it's like the. Up hmm. oh, two, one. Got nice. It. Over. Hi. Oh, buddy. <laughs> that is not the kind of soldier kill I wanted. You win. <laughs> Win. You hit for 64, you freak. Remember when this gun used to Oh, that to was actually people? a sick f***ing clip. What happened? Cool back burner stuff. It's just sad. But it's just the sad truth about it. Oh my god, this guy's lobbing pills. Who are you? Friend? Oh my god. <laughs> back burner moment. Holy f***ing uh -uh. shit, okay. Oh, right, and one more thing before the video ends. I do want to address the elephant in the room, the bait and switch. I know, I'm sorry. The intent was to make people go, a back burner? Where the f*** did that come from? Just like they probably would after encountering a back burner pyro in a real game. And I'd like to think that I hit the mark there. There really was no better way to demonstrate the unexpected than to advertise a completely different weapon than what we were actually making. But that being said, I can totally understand how a lot of you might be left a little disappointed because you really did just want to see a man's guide to the Huntsman. And I can sympathize with that. It'd probably be a really fun video. Which is why I'm happy to announce that A Man's Guide to the Huntsman is out right now. Yes, really. No, I'm not joking. This is real. By this point in the video, assuming you didn't skip ahead or anything, it's out. If you go and check my channel or your sub box or whatever, it'll be there. And if you did skip ahead, then give it like 15 minutes. I don't know. But yeah, I'm assuming if you haven't clicked off already, you're about to. So uh, thanks for watching.